Welcome to Just Charisma, episode 45. I'm your host, Brayden Charisma, and joining me today is Lee Wilson. Hey. How you doing, man? Not too bad. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. So Lee is a filmmaker, photographer. He does, you know, he's a, he, he's crazy good at it. You know, he's got <laughs> the drone shots, he's got the landscapes. Yeah, and then music production. And music that. production, yeah. yes. So, because I, I got it all started from that. Yeah, so why don't we talk about how you started? So, like, you, you were saying you started with... You said instead of buying a car, you're like, let's let's get a music studio. In my, yeah, in my definitely. Apartment. So that was one thing. So when I was about 19 years old, I I grew played piano as a kid. Okay. And then so I wanted to maybe stick, as I hit 19, I wanted to maybe learn piano again. But rather than just doing piano, I thought like right now like there's a time where you can start doing music production in your house. Yeah. This is before um, it got to be more affordable, I guess. Okay. So, but it, so it took a little bit of money to be able to build the studio at my place. Yeah. So I ended up choosing to buy a music studio as opposed to buying a car. Right. So I walked places for like four years, took buses, um, as I had a music studio in my place. So I was able to um, build my studio like piece by piece. Yeah. And then from there, um, I had the music studio and operated for about 10 years. Okay. And then I wanted to be able to uh, offer music videos um, for the people I work with. And, uh, through that, I ended up doing it with somebody else that was in film school, but him and I had a little bit of a falling out. Okay. So what happened is that after uh, a year or two after that, I decided to buy the camera myself. Okay. So he, 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 bought, he bought the camera, so the camera went with him, because that was his part of it. Yeah. So I bought the camera myself, and without having any knowledge of how to operate it, I put the, made the investment, and then I started shooting. That's cool. But yeah. So like, what did you start shooting with? Was it just was it, was it with the music videos? Or? Yeah, no, no, I didn't start with any music videos at the start or anything. I just okay. started learning how to basically go out there, starting with landscapes. Okay. Trying yeah. to figure out what things, how, how the camera worked, because I had no none of that knowledge. Yeah. Like so, YouTube was my friend at that the start. YouTube's super good for that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's really good to be able to start off with. So it helped me quite a bit on in, in starting out how like learning how to frame a shot. Um, how to how like the, the settings of the camera work like aperture ISO and all those like the shutter speed and so it helped me learn my foundation from that just using YouTube and then going out there and shooting okay and then we talked about it a little bit as I sort of like wasn't when I do things I sort of have like this healthy obsession with it yeah so um, if I do it I, I really go all in so of course right it's like every morning I'd be out shooting and then I run into some of the people that you've had in the show uh, in the mornings would be out shooting but it's sort of that thing where you just basically you spend the time learning until you get to an area where you're comfortable. Yep. And then you start moving on to the steps up. Okay. Yeah, so. That's really cool. So then, like, how, what, so what got you into the filmmaking aspect then? Yeah, yeah. so the cool thing is that, that was part of, like, the, um, the idea of offering music videos yeah. for people. So I've always been uh, a film buff. Yeah. So I love the idea of really good visuals that are out there. So I always love movies, love high production, th- like, um, shows. Okay. And so I've really watched those quite a bit. And then, um... I started having areas where, like, so YouTube was really good at being able to help you get a base of things. For sure. Uh, and then the thing is, is, what happens is you start realizing that people are sharing information, but they might not have the full correct information because they're trying to get you to click on their stuff. Yeah, that makes and, sense. And so what happens is you have people that are just starting with themselves, creating these tutorials, and then you realize that you're going to be capped. So what I ended right. up doing is paying for, like, other professionals okay. um, to share their knowledge. So okay. So their sites or through, like, sites, I'm not sure if you've ever heard of Creative Live. I don't think so. Yeah, so what it is is basically professionals in the field, um, they go to, they go to Creative Live, they give out um, lessons on shooting, or photography, music, it could be yeah. podcasts, it could be okay. anything. And then, so the people that are like the leaders in the field, they're sharing their knowledge of things. So for me, like, if it came to an area rather than some somebody maybe that's starting out, yeah. I'm learning from people that are like the leaders of the industry, okay, sharing yeah. their knowledge with you. So yeah, so it's like kind of like mentoring. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. it. So you have that, and then you could watch the videos as much as you want, so that would be what i do. Okay. I would go out, shoot, and then I would watch the videos and get all the steps down, and For then sure. move on to the next one. Okay. And so that's what happened with filmmaking, was that I was able to do that. And then um, I got to an area where I started getting a lot better at cinematography, basically yep. framing the shots. Okay. And then the cool thing is like, you just keep grinding, you keep working that way for like, uh, basically it was two or three years straight. Okay. And then I ended up getting a call to be able to do, be the stills photographer on a movie set. Oh, cool. So it was pretty neat that way, and then you got to be in this big, like, uh, Vancouver film production, where I'm doing the stills for it, I'm working with the director, oh, wow. um, the, the videographers, the cinematographers, and you realize everybody there, like, that even though they have their own roles, like the sound guy, yep. the, the video operator, the cinematographer, they're all, like, filmmakers themselves. Like, and they're all their own, their own okay. creators. Yeah. So even like the after like in between the shots or whatever, the sound guy showed me his camera, and his camera at that time was better than my camera. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's just one of those things where like you realize that like people, everybody here is 
their own creative person, even though they have a specific job that they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's really cool. Um, if you don't mind me asking, what movie were you? Oh, like it's the... called Monkey Beach. Monkey Beach. Yeah. Okay. So it'll be coming out um this coming year. Okay. So I'm not sure if you ever heard Adam Beach. Have you ever heard that name before? It doesn't sound. So familiar, Adam but... Beach, he is in. So you're going to a Marvel movie coming up, right? Correct. Right. So he's in Suicide Squad. Okay. He's one of the. I forgot what his person was in there, but I'm not sure if you ever remember the movie Wind Talkers. Okay. Wind Talkers is like 2002. Nicolas Cage. Okay. And so he was the, the he was the opposite of Nicolas Cage. And Adam Beach is one of the actors in this movie. Um, Nathaniel Archand, and he's from that Dick Wolf show FBI. Okay. And so yeah, there's all these really cool like actors That's that are really in it. Cool. And like they were just like really cool laid back people. Like I'd be doing the photography, we'd be sitting there just talking about life and stuff like that. And That's between, cool. Like, this, then the way they work, it was very it was really neat to see like the. The way a full movie is shot. For sure. Because there's a lot of work that goes on. Oh my doing. gosh, I can't even imagine. It's probably like, you, like who knows how many times you got to redo a scene because someone laughs. You really know something? Like, yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. So the cool thing for a movie is like not even how many times you redo it. Basically, everything has to be perfect. And so when they shoot, they shoot one this way. They'll shoot back this way. They'll shoot the back side of somebody. They'll shoot the side of them. And then they have to redo that over and over for every single person that's in there. Oh my gosh. Because you have gosh. to get this person. And then you have to get the person next to you. Wow. You have to get the full group. And then you think of it all the equipment has to move. Yeah, of like, course. So the camera, so if you're moving this way, everybody has to move from this side to this side. And that's all shot for... That's a lot of time. <laughs> it is. So you think of like a 30 second scene, that probably took like three hours. Oh my gosh. You have to do that 30 seconds. That's really cool though. Like, <laughs> yeah. I've always been like so curious about filmmaking because like you always, I always see like the behind the scenes thing. Yeah. It's never like, never goes super in depth. <laughs> it's just kind of like, bloopers that's and kind of exactly, like, yeah. you get like a little B-roll of like them doing it behind <laughs> the scenes and it's like, it's cool. And then it's just like, but you never like realize how much work it actually goes into like for such a small thing. Hundred like. percent. That's the you're, the way that you said it is exactly how I because I never worked on a, a full production that way. Like, yeah. So I've shot lots of things myself, but I never got to see it my, like yeah. in person and to see the work. It basically changed the way I shoot myself because for sure I used to shoot maybe one two different views on things. Yep. But now I incorporate that multiple angles. Okay. I take this exact same way that they should did this in a real movie. I do that in every way that I'm, I'm shooting now. Okay. So I've taken that with me just because I felt like that's a tool that you can really take to be a better filmmaker. For sure, right? You can mm -hmm. take, like, it's cool, like, when you have those experiences because then you kind of get, like, those moments of, like, oh, I never thought I could do it like this. Yeah. Or, like, and you just, or you see something that you just, oh, that's a cool shot. Like, and you just, or just, there's, there's little things you nitpick that you're just, like, I can take you can take these with you right? definitely and the cool thing is is that when you're around people that are all creative that way you're able to take what you're seeing and then you're like the cool thing is that people want are happy to share yeah so I would talk with the director like how we're just talking right now we just have a conversation I'd ask them like hey what are you seeing and then they'd be telling me what they're seeing and then the cool thing is is that like they also have cinematographers on and okay. I got to be he got to really share like how he sees things yeah and like the stuff they're shooting like, I guarantee you like this It'll be like the Vancouver Film Festival, Toronto Film Festival, you'll see it. Okay. It's going to be in there because the way they shot it, it just looks unbelievable because I got to see it in the screens as they're shooting it. So oh. I have my camera and I'm doing that stuff that you talked about, the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. So that was my role. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So I'm like, I'm there with my camera capturing them, capturing everything. Yeah. And then when I wasn't capturing that, I'd be looking at the screens as the, from the director and also the videographers and it was really amazing to see. No doubt. Yeah. Did you find like it was like the state, like the, I guess the studio was like super hectic all the time? You want to know something? It was a little bit, um, because basically they shot in my hometown of Kitimat. So it was oh, like, okay. really in Northwest BC. So they had a Vancouver film crew up north. So they had um, maybe four of those big, like rig trucks carrying all the equipment oh, around. Oh yeah, yeah. So things had to move around and there was lots of motion happening, lots of things that had to happen because actors would be staying in certain areas and then crews would be, they're not staying at their house, right? So right. Staying, so everybody had to come together. At For sure. Times. There's so, like, basically there's so much moving parts into a movie being done, that, especially one with a bit, you know, a decent budget. Of course, so, yeah. Yeah, unlike myself, like, so when I go shooting, I'm the... You're the one-man <laughs> show, right? Like, you, you got it. That's <laughs> why so I do like, the sound, the video, the editing, so like, I don't have to worry about other people, right? Totally. So, when you get to be on there, you realize there's so many moving parts, everybody has to be on the same page. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's so cool. Like, I've always wanted to, like, get on, like, a, like just get on one. Like, just yeah. to see, like, not even to, like, be part of it. Just kind of, like, watch. Like, people watch. And just, like, kind of take it in, like, how how it all goes down. Absolutely. That was one thing, I, like, even though I was working, it was still something where I, I did a lot of that. Like, yeah, basically, I'm sitting there in awe, right? Like, seeing, like, totally. this person I used to see 
on, on the big screen as, as a kid, and he's like right there. Yeah, the acting. Right <laughs> close. I can literally say hi to And like the cool thing I loved is that everybody was so down to earth. Like you, there was no egos with anybody. That's everybody cool. was just really kind. Like you're just talking to another human being, and that's really cool. Like I hear like a lot of actors are like that, or actors and actresses. Mm-hmm. But then there's always like it's like that two percent you always really hear about, <laughs> yeah. and then you're like, oh, I don't know if everyone's like that or not, but like. That's cool that they were like super approachable. Like, yeah. Um, it's like, I mean, it's like when I went and seen Kind of Funny, and I got to meet them in person, and they were like just as humble as they are on their content, and Definitely. just like it was just like, oh wow, like this is like insane. Like they're not just a personality on, on the camera; they're actually like, they're the same. They're they, who they are. Say. And I think that's what sort of like what people connect with when somebody's being their authentic self. People connect totally. with that more than somebody because I, I think what happens is if we play a character, it's not going to always show like the right way. Yeah. When you're authentic self, people see it and they connect with it totally and that's the idea and then also when you're off camera you don't have to put on an act or anything you just be yourself exactly and i think that's a better way because it's congruent to the way you're what you're putting out there absolutely and i think that's a real key to people wanting to follow right yeah totally Mm -hmm. um so what was your biggest takeaway from working on that set Uh, one of my biggest takeaways it was the amount of work and like basically it's almost sort of the area where you're aiming perfection on almost every single shot. Yeah. Like you don't sort of just settle on things. So that's something I took away from it. Like I knew there was really beautiful visuals that would be there, but it's the amount of dedication to get the shot. Totally. There wasn't any corner cutting on things. Because okay. sometimes that happens, right? Say if you're out, you're tired already. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, I, I got it. I think I got it. And then, and then you, you call it, right? Room. Yeah. And then you move on. So I realized that like, you know, you don't think you got it. You have to make sure that you do have it. And so that was something I started doing. So every time, so one of my big takeaways is being purposeful every time I'm shooting. Okay. So I think that's one of the key things for me is that every time I'm doing something, I'm really purposeful for it. Whether I'm taking my drone up in the air, yep. I'm really purposeful where, like what I'm going to do when it's up there. So I'm visualizing beforehand what I'm going to do. Okay. And I'm not going to just go out there and shoot, like spray and pray, I guess. Yeah. We're going to go out there and hope that you get it. So just really have an idea of what I'm going to aim for. Okay. And then execute the idea. And then if I didn't get it, Go to yeah, just keep going. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. So how do you find like edit or like filming with a drone? Oh, it's it's a lot of fun actually. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lot of fun. Like so, I've been doing it for that part. I've had the drone for three and a half years. So this is drone number two. Oh, so what happened to the first drone? <laughs> the first drone met its end in a waterfall. Oh no! <laughs> it, it was one of those really sad moments because I had it for a year already, and like so, I, I felt like I was a really good operator already because basically I've flown it for a year. I'm flying it yeah. like, two or three times a day. And then there's all the drone needs is one crash, one crash, and it's done because the crash it took was pretty epic. Oh man! <laughs> so I'm in this area, this really like beautiful waterfall, and the, the spray of the waterfall made it think like there's it was gonna hit an object, so it backs up, and there's only no sensors in the back. Oh, okay. It backs up because it thinks it's gonna hit something. It hits a tree, falls from there, hits the rocks in front of the waterfall, oh. and it falls into the water of the waterfall. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. That's horrible. So I was able to recover it and. <laughs> Send it to like the, the the maker of the drone, or like, there's no repair of this. <laughs> <laughs> so well, fair enough. <laughs> so yeah, so it took me. So I ended up going without. So here's the cool thing that I took from that though. So I lost I, my drone was gone for like four months till I could buy a new one, so I could save up for a new one. Yeah. But what happened for me is that as I got the drone, I was so excited with that tool, like photography was taking a back seat. So what happened for me is when the drone went down, I ended up yeah. taking okay. it back, and then basically putting the same amount of effort into my photos again. Absolutely. And then when I got the drone back, I didn't switch to be all this. It was I just, you had both. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to do both, and I wanted to make sure I was spending just as time equally, like, honing both crafts. Totally. And so that was one of the cool things. So, you know, it cost me money, but it got me to be an area where I'm more balanced. Absolutely. So not just... You're not just, yeah, like, super well, able <laughs> yes. to like, find a drone and get the right yeah. shot, but also, like, you know, you still work on your photography. Yes, 100%. So it's, it's all growing. They're growing together. That's yeah. exactly it. So that's something I did take away from that part of it, is, like, the idea of, making sure I'm investing or putting my time into both okay. equally so one's not getting better than the other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then, uh, like, have you filmed any projects lately? Yeah, so there's one that's going to come out. I was hoping I'd be able to share it, like, in this past bit, but I went to Pacific Sands. Okay. And I stayed there for about three days and I was able to shoot a promo for them. Oh, cool. And so we shot it over a storm season uh, and then I thought it was going to come out right away so I was really pumped because... I know it looks really good. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> and so it was one of those ones that you aim for it, you hope it looks good, and they, they loved it. But the only thing that's going to come out for the start of the season next year. Oh, dang. <laughs> so I have this really great thing that I shot and I know it's going to be, um, and then it's not going to come out for a little while. But while I was doing the movie as well, here's one cool thing that happened. Sure. They had about um, six, or six or seven days where we had a, a lull in the movie. Oh, yeah. And I was able to shoot two music videos in that time. Oh, cool. So there's a person that's back there, his name's Arthur Renwick. So he does sort of like 
folk, country, rock type of music, a blend of those three. And so he contacted me because he knew I do photos and the, the, the filmmaking. Yeah. And so he asked if we would be able to try shoot one. The goal was to do one music video in that period of time. But we just really worked hard. And then so in that period, like, in those four or five days, we were able to shoot two videos. Wow. And then it took me a little while to edit everything because there's a lot of content. Of course. But we ended up putting up two videos. And he's having his album come out this coming year. The videos will come out. With, oh, perfect. With the album. So yeah. I'm excited for those. So yeah. I'm going to probably have a whole bunch of things coming out all at once. Nice. Which is pretty neat. That is then, really cool. The neat thing is the movie will be coming out probably this summer. Or Ooh. Yeah, as well. Yeah. I said, so all these different projects yeah. Yeah. happening. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> like, it's just like, yeah, all your work's like... It's being, it's like finally yes. being shown, like it's completed. Definitely. Like, oh, that's so cool. It's a really, especially like coming from an area, you think four years ago, I got a camera, I didn't know a thing, right? Yeah, exactly. I didn't know a single thing, didn't know how to operate it, and then you just work hard, and then things just start happening. Yeah, things just kind of fall into peace, when, or fall into place when you're like, when you're dedicated, you're like Definitely. motivated, and like, because I mean, you were saying that you were working, you would go, you would shoot in the morning, go to work, and yeah. then come home and like learn. Yes, and it was in every day. Yeah. It wasn't like I wouldn't take a break. And I'd just be doing that same thing every day to just make sure I was improving and yeah. not being stagnant with anything. Because even when I started getting areas where people were complimenting the photos, I don't want to take that as, but hey, I'm yeah. in an area where... Yeah, don't stop there. So <laughs> yeah. Go further, right? Yeah. yeah. And so I wanted to get to an area where it's sort of like um, when people see my shots, they'll know it's my shot. Totally. And so that's an area, but so that doesn't happen from just like being fine with it you have to really keep honing yeah you, like it's like your your healthy obsession right you yes. gotta find like the right picture you gotta find the right yeah. shot like it's just it's not you're not settling you're just like you won't take it unless you know that you're yes per, like you're completely content over the moon for it absolutely and one of the good things is like we live in probably one of the most beautiful places in the world 100 percent. being on vancouver island yeah. we probably do that when you're talking about getting out exploring we're talking about that yeah right and i think that we have so many like beautiful places that you can go just hang out at yeah and then the cool thing for me is i'll hang out those places and then i'll shoot those places totally and i'll be able to share it and i think when people see it they're like wow and then i remember that was something for me as well like when my when i after when i was doing the music thing i wasn't getting out that much like okay even though we live in probably one of the most beautiful places or probably four or five years where uh, i was entrenched in like my regular day job type of thing totally and i wasn't getting out exploring places and then yeah yeah we have like a world-class place to come explore yeah and so that's something i wanted to start doing so that was the reason i started working towards okay uh, being independent and being on my own was to start being able to explore more yeah and so i was able to start traveling with that oh, that's really exploring cool. that's yeah. cool I, I i definitely need to explore more mm -hmm. on this island like not that i don't i don't know just between work and all that other stuff i just find yeah. like i get i get so distracted and busy <laughs> and then it's like all these other things come up, but I definitely should take more time to tr even check out a couple other places I've never been to uh, on the island. Right? Definitely, like, I think that's one of the things, right? Like we have so many places, and like if you basically just dedicate some time to say like, you know what, I'm gonna go find this place today. Yeah. And then you just and the cool thing is, even if you don't find it, or you don't, you, you might find something even cooler. Yes, right? that's exactly it. Or you're just having an adventure with your friends. Exactly right. right? Like, so it's like you're 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 coming out a winner anyway. Pretty much. Like, <laughs> regardless, the day was a success. You guys, we weren't sitting in the house all yeah. day doing nothing. We were like, you know, getting fresh air, you know, out in the outside, you know, and ha just doing something we have never been, like, I've never been to, right? Absolutely. And that's the thing with me. I started realizing that even though I could be tired after work at that time, yeah. I was still feeling charged after coming back. Like, you go to a place that blows you away. Yeah. And you're coming back and riding this, like, this vibration is high. Totally. And so that was one of those things. So I was like, realized, like, even though I'm tired, to say yes. Just say yes and just get, get together with your friends, get out and go exploring. Definitely. And then even though I was exhausted, I'd come back from the place, like, just writing these really, really strong, like positive emotions from it. That's so, good, man. That's good. Yeah. So Lee, this is the show, part of the show called The Motivational Moment. Yeah. So how would you describe your passion in five words or less? <clears throat> I think what I would say is inspire yourself to, or challenge yourself to inspire others. Okay, cool. I think that would be what it is. Challenge yourself to inspire other people. And that can be anything for anybody, right? Like the idea, like m m mine is, is photography, music, videos. Yep. But people can challenge themselves to inspire other people in any way, whether it's working with people, whether it's doing a podcast, yeah. or a show, or um, any like type of work that you decide to do, right? Challenge yourself to try to be the best version of yourself. Of course. And inspire other people to want to like be a part of it or yeah. just do witness it absolutely like and i find like if you try something and then say you fail or like you know you start trying but you're not giving all your effort maybe it's not the thing for you so yes. like you're not as passionate as you thought but mm -hmm. at least you tried it absolutely and now you know so now you can move on to the next thing so you're not just putting all your eggs in one basket definitely, definitely. so yeah like i mean as soon as i started this i was just like it was just like a gear <laughs> change, turned to my head and i was like oh, we gotta keep doing this <laughs> yeah so you, you so that's the thing too right is i think when you start having 
Because there's sort of that um, area where you're working in the zone, right? When you start feeling like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. You have this area where it doesn't feel like work for you anymore. No. It, you just, you feel like this is, you're just operating off of flow, basically. Yeah. And like, don't get me wrong, like, yeah, sometimes the editing is, you know, tedious yeah. feeling, but like, I never feel like, I never like, feel like I can't, I shouldn't be doing it. I'm yeah. like, I always want to be like, oh, I should probably edit today. I should probably do this or... What should, what should I make do with the vlog? Like, can I make it interesting? Or Definitely. who should be on my next show? And it's just like all these things that I'm always, it's always turning in my head and it's just like, it's really exciting. Absolutely. And I think it's one of the things when you talk about it, like for me, I, I'm i lucky in the sense that I'm a little bit of a nerd that way. I enjoy the editing just as much as I enjoy the shooting. And that's totally. for photos, music, and um, and the videos. Yeah. So as I'm, And I enjoy like just as much as like being out there shooting, I enjoy being in front of my, like, my, my computer and just trying to figure out like the way to make this story like, come to life. Yeah. And so it's just like, so I'll spend hours editing and the time just flies. Totally, right? Like, <laughs> there's so many times where like on a Saturday I'll start editing and then it's like 12 o'clock and I look and I'm like, that's, that's like three. Like, <laughs> yes. How? <laughs> and, and those are the moments that people need to find, right? Those are the flow moments that people yeah. talk about, right? The idea of time just flies yeah. when you're doing something you're passionate about. And totally. That's a, like, that's what people should challenge themselves to find. Absolutely. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, you, once you find it, I think, don't, like, don't let it just go by, like, grab it and just chase it. Absolutely. Even if it's, even if it's just, like, a little hobby you do, like, for now, but, like, it's, like, as long as it, you're not coming home, not doing anything, because yeah. you're not, not because you're tired, but because you're uninspired. Absolutely. I'm fully with you on the idea of, like, of doing it for a hobby, because at first, when I did this, I didn't have the idea that there was, the end goal wasn't to sit here yeah. and, and make money off of it, but it just started happening that way. And then it's like, wow, like, this, and then, this is actually a thing I can actually <laughs> do, yes, right? Like, that's exactly it. And then you start realizing it, man, I can, but the idea of, I would have done it just because I love doing it anyway. Yeah. But then you realize, like, I can actually do this and sort of, like, make a living at this. Which is, like, incredible, right? Yeah. Like, not many people can say, oh, yeah, I do exactly what I want to do for a living. Like, 100%. a lot of people are like, go to school, they don't find a job in their field right away, yeah. and then they're stuck working at, like, a retail store for, like, three, four years, Absolutely. and then they're just sitting there, like, miserable, and which sucks. And another thing, too, is, like, and it's not a perfect thing, because we talked about a little about that before as well, like, I'm still figuring out how to make this a yeah. long-term thing. Like, Absolutely. Like, my summer months, um, spring, summer months, You're just, fall, yeah, it, packed. It, it was really going very well, and then I realized I hit a lull in winter, but that's one of those things that's just a challenge to figure out. How do I work with this and make, totally. it, make it happen? But it's I just look at that challenge and say like you know what it's a problem solving thing. Yeah, I have to figure out like how to make that all happen. And Absolutely, handle that you know eventually we'll be able to do it. Totally, man, that's cool. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you sharing that with me. Yeah. So uh, coming back to your photography, so what kind of photography do you like specialize or what do you prefer? Like, oh, what- uh, my big specialty people would see it like you it'd be the landscapes. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, like, one of the big things for me is I'll travel to a place and I'll document like the. Uh, whether it's a waterfall, like, so have you ever seen, like, I'm really going to be able to do waterfall shots. Okay, okay. So I'll just travel to them, I'll use, like, long exposures, and I'll try to capture them in really creative ways. Okay. So, like, just landscapes and nature is my, one of my biggest things that I'll do. Okay, cool. Uh, but then I start, I also do, like, portraits of people. Of course, yeah. But, but it's just sort of, like, my passion is to be able to be in nature, take my time, and yeah. just be able to get the shot that I want. Okay. And so, like, I'll do it whether with my camera on the ground or else be up in the air with the drone capturing yeah, okay. um, the photo on the ground. Nice. And with the, with the drone, can you take photos with it as well? Yeah, yeah. Oh. So you do video and photos. Okay, cool. And so the cool thing from when I first started, I was just doing all video with it. Yeah. And then I realized you're getting this perspective that you'd never be able to get on the ground. And so I start traveling these places and I'll be able to start figuring out ways to sh- basically think of it as, like, the drone as a, a really big truck, like, tripod okay yeah. so i'm using it that way so I'm okay using it cool to, to an area where i'm not going super high but i'm going to an area where i'm getting this angle that you never get from yeah from just like being yes. like where you are okay yeah. cool. and that's something that i think sort of like when people see a drone photo that way it sort of blows them away because you're seeing a place in a different way that you in, never would have thought of before yeah i was gonna say like what are the odds that you're actually gonna be able to see that in yes. person right like and and so for me even like when i'm seeing it I'm like looking at it on the, on the screen because you see i'll be able to see that and i'm blown away myself of course I'm yeah this spot from a, di- a different perspective even though i'm standing at the place looking at it yeah myself but i'm looking at this different light from having the drone up in the air that's really cool yeah uh so then with like landscaping nature do you ever do animals or is it just like yeah, oh yeah for sure like yeah. so i've been, able, been lucky to be able to like photograph like grizzly bears oh wow um i got lucky with killer whales um, so the really funny thing for Vancouver Island, like, have you seen killer whales yet out here? I've seen them, yeah, a few yeah, times. Yeah, so yeah. the weird thing for me is I grew up in an area where killer whales would come up our channel, so I'd see them from my house. Oh, so okay. So that's what so used to happen. 
But I knew that there's killer whales that live on Vancouver Island, but I lived here for 15 years and I've never seen one out here. You don't see two out there. And so I didn't see any. And I was thinking, like, what's happening? <laughs> then I took a, a tour with uh, uh, one of the ones out of Duncan. Okay. It was a, a, a basically a, a orca and whale tour. Okay. And so I got to see them there. And it was really amazing to be, uh, be able to see them in their pods. Absolutely. And then after I did that, I probably got to see them in that same year four different times. Wow. After I paid to see them. Yeah. And then I'd just be out places in nature and then and you just, they the whales would just, just oh swim by. <laughs> and that, that's after 15 years of not seeing a single one. Yeah, no, it's just like consistent. <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah. you actually want to see us now. Like, <laughs> so that was one of the weird things, and because there's even times in that area where I'm be on the ferry, and yeah. somebody says, "Oh, there's killer whales outside," and I go on the deck, and like they're not even here. I don't even see them. You like that. barely like yeah. <laughs> yeah. And other people see them, but I didn't. Like, I just had no luck with them. So fair enough. So it was really cool that in the after doing that, I was able to start seeing so four times in the island that that one year, and so I got to see killer whales, um, humpback whales. Um, I went to well, here's one thing you I don't like say. If you ever get a chance to do the Canadian Rockies, okay. do the Canadian Rockies. All right. And when you do the Canadian Rockies, what do they call it? It's, um, they have a, there's a highway one, but there's a highway right next to it that you can take. It's sort of like a, an area where it's very chill. Yeah. So basically you can pull up anytime you see a grizzly bear. So oh, there okay. you can see like a moose, grizzly bear, black bears, and they're all in this. I forget, I'll have to remember the name and, and totally. share that with you. But the idea behind that, rather than zooming on the highway, you're in an area where basically everybody's hoping to see an animal and everybody just pulls off. And they're able to see like these animals okay. up and close. That's and, really and it was cool. going so it felt like a Canadian safari. Yeah, definitely <laughs> right there because basically it was like animal after animal. Okay, that we were able to see. And you didn't find like the bears aggressive or anything. No, they were. You want to know something? I think for the national parks, yeah, that the bears basically they get kind of used to humans. Okay, and I got this from another um, photographer as well, like somebody. I really, his name is Tom Magelson. Okay, but he is a person that's probably he's a National Geographic one. Oh, but right. he talked about the bears basically being really aware that um they, that they're protected in these areas. And that, that as long as they don't attack humans, they're pre they're pretty safe. Oh, okay. and so like even ourselves, like I'm sitting in the car and a grizzly bear is just walking in the highway, right by the car, within feet yeah. from it. And everybody's parked, and he's just walking casually down there. Wow. And there's even bears that basically they grew up in the park, and then their kids have now oh, grown okay. up in the park. So yeah. they, they understand how to interact. So yeah, with humans. But the only problem is, is that some humans don't understand that they're yeah. a wild animal, and they get too close. For it. Totally, even right. even the one where I said the, the, the bear was walking by, there's a car within, I say, three feet that's like of a, him and, and following him. That's too close. Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, don't give me like it's still a wild animal, right? Like, it's yeah. still be like all of a sudden killer instinct just turns on and then starts attacking you. Because right? the thing is, like they, they look really beautiful, but you don't realize the size of that, that close. That totally. A uh, massive animal. So you'd see like, the long hair, the long hair rams as well there. Oh, cool. But the, the neat thing is for, for Banff, Jasper, and like even Yoho National Park, yep. those animals are, they're all over that, those parks. That's so you'll see them as you're just driving to the site to site, and you'll see like these animals that are right there. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. I definitely would have to check that out because yeah. like, it'd just be cool to even just like take it in, just like see them, right? Absolutely. Like, you, what will happen for you is the same way that happened for me, is you're driving from like lake to lake or wherever you're going to be, just looking at the mountains, you can be like, wow. And that was something I said probably my whole week of camping there. Oh, was I was driving, I'm like, wow, I just can't believe this. this is, it's something that happened. It's like a surreal experience. Totally, man. There. That's really awesome. Mm -hmm. So what was your what was the, your favorite animal that you shot? <clears throat> I had a connection to killer whales. Okay. I really do have a connection with them because I guess I'm, I'm First Nations as well. So yep. I grew up um, okay. on the reserve and my clan is actually a killer whale clan. Oh, cool. And so I have this area where I just have this this connection with them. And, and I think another thing too is that there's... Have you ever watched the documentary Blackfish? I have not, no. Okay, I, I'd recommend or highly recommend it. I, I love watching documentaries. Okay. But doc, Blackfish really opened my eyes into like the the connection they have with their pods and how smart uh, they are. Yeah. But they have these really deep emotions with their with their families. Okay. And it sort of was an area where I started having this deep understanding for like how they interact with each other. Definitely. Out there and it's something that... And I think what happened for Blackfish is another thing, talking about filmmaking. Yep. I wanted to make... Do do films that sort of help have an impact on people. And I felt like that that documentary yep. basically changed um, like the, the way people see like places like Sea World. Totally, and it basically had an area where you can't breed orcas in captivity anymore. Which and the, yeah, and so the idea like I feel like that documentary like films can actually change um, the way people. It doesn't have an impact on the world, right? One hundred percent. If it's got enough uh, momentum, like it can like yes. really change anything. I mean, it's like Steve-O, He's always super like or pro yes. anti uh, Sea World or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Like all that stuff's always really cool. Like that's cool. That he's passionate about it, and like he's definitely bringing a lot of good points to it, right? Like these animals, they, they're like nothing but like they're helpless, right? Like, yeah, definitely. 
And I think that's one of those things is that I think when you do some, do things as well, like whether it's your passion, if you have advocacy involved in it, it's one of those things where you can do what you love and then be able to help somebody out in your Definitely. cause. And there's one that I'm seeing, I'm not sure if you've ever seen Our Planet. Uh, it's the people that do uh, Planet Earth. Okay, I've definitely heard of it. Yeah, yeah like so, it's on Netflix, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. A, and so one of the cool things is I want to shoot in a way where I'm shooting like that. Okay. Because I think like, they're innovators in the way they shoot, but they're actually shooting very purposefully. They're okay. shooting in a way where they're trying to shoot for the idea of to make people fall in love with the planet, to protect the planet. For, absolutely. And to protect the ecosystems that are there. And then I think this, the other ones, they always had that as a, as a as an end. Like, yep. sort of like this is where we'll wrap up, this is why we... Okay. And, but this one is basically in our planet. They're basically talking about their advocacy straight throughout. This is why we're oh, shooting cool. here. This. And it's a really, so it's really a direct message on on things so it's a really neat thing that way that's awesome man yeah well lee i just wanted to thank you for coming oh, on the absolutely. show i really appreciate it i mean uh so like where can the people find you oh yeah for sure so the, one of the big ones you can find me i have to change my tag but it's lee sees pacific northwest lee sees underscore pnw okay is that uh, that's your instagram, instagram? Yeah. yeah or else you can find me lee wilson studios on facebook okay and then i haven't created my youtube yet but eventually that will come okay do you have like a website as well or just yeah, oh yeah i have lee wilson studios.com okay perfect i'll, I'll throw them right under your name Excellent. And then people can go check you out, like you should, because I mean, he takes great, <laughs> yeah. does great filming, and he does great photos. Like, I can vouch for that. Well, thanks for having me. You're welcome, man. Uh, you don't forget to subscribe. You know, hit check out the other videos. Uh, you can find me at Just Charisma on anything. Uh, so don't be afraid to do all those things. And uh, thank you, and we'll see you guys next time. Excellent.